this is the grand final gambit versus fanatic gambit and fanatic are all teams but we have a new lineups let's see how it clashes I think he's the best in European and it's like a really smart player by, by himself. Reynov, he's soloed the mid lane, he's picked up a double! He's the most hardest jungler to play against. From season 2 or 3 I was his fanboy. Vander face tanks it, he's going down to Diamond Prox. Because he creates meta and then like he was the father of the jungle. First blood goes to Reckless and that's two kills! He's back for Fnatic and he's already on the board! I think he's a good player. Every guy wants to play at some point for a Fnatic because how good the team is. He's a really good player and he's always been sort of one step ahead of me. Forgiven blood! He's selling, he smells it up and he grabs the kill! I want to for once show that I'm at least equally good or even better, uh, but that requires a lot of hard work and I'm up for the challenge. for all the teams who are getting into the action today. Here is Fnatic entering the building just a couple of minutes ago. Febben there, rain over, as praised by Diamond just a minute ago. Cabo Shard setting up, looking to find that very first victory for Gambit. So important, this matchup for them here today. They're forgiven as well. I'm Efeu Shogzapurtre, gearing up for today's matches with the help of Mitch Krepo Voorspoels and Trevor Quickshot Henry. Yeah, Krepo's got his party tie on, so we're in for a whole heap of fun. And at the halfway point in week two, we're gonna look at how the teams stack up and take a look at the standings. Still at the top of the table, OG and Fnatic riding high at 3-0. Then the Giants, H2K and Unicorns of Love tied in third at 2-1-1. And while well, I'd like to take a closer look at those Giants because we all kind of feel like they have made a visible improvement in their team um, in the last couple of weeks. I completely agree. They did make a change coming into the summer split. They, you know, swapped out Rydal for Godfrey. And while Godfrey had a shaky start, games two and three have been significantly better. His dark findings yesterday were fantastic. As a team, Giants just seem a little bit more all together. I do want to take note though, they are playing against teams who have been struggling in the summer splits. So you could argue they're beating teams that will be in the bottom half of the table, but they're still picking up those wins. And a lot of it I think is on the fact that Audrey stepped up, Frederick stepped up, and Werlip in particular on that Maokai had a great game yesterday. Great game from all of them team-wise and individually. At the bottom of the table though, SK and Gambit still no win and in dire straits honestly. Yeah, I don't know about their music choice or music preference there, but looking at those teams, both have one thing in common, and that is Forgiven. Is X Team 03, his new Team 03, is he the common link, or is it just, you know, happens to be? I, I don't yeah I don't know what it'll be. Luck. We'll have to find out. The one thing I do want to remind everybody, Gambit went 0-5 in Spring Split and then bounced back 7-0. So maybe they still need more games, but the problem is there's only 18 games in the season, and this is the one that gets you as close to Worlds as you can get. Yeah, fans, hang in there. Maybe two more losses and they're up the upswing. Someone who's definitely on the upswing, OG and Fnatic. There's not a lot to say about it. They are just playing incredibly well. Week four. Week four. Week four. If these two teams keep winning, week four is when they, when they go head-to-head, -head, and that's when one of them will pick up a guaranteed loss, but uh, it's definitely going to be a hyped-up matchup. That'll be our match of the week for sure. Yeah, exactly. Well, yesterday we also saw the return of the Rogue Mage to Summoner Rift after his rework and release way back on patch 5.8. And for more on Rise's resurgence in the top lane, we're going to check in with Stress at the Telestrator. Thank you very much, Shox. Now, it's been 24 hours since Rise re-emerged in the EU meta, and I've been jumping in and out of spectating solo queue games, and we figured we'd give you a little bit of help if you haven't quite caught up with the curve from uh, Huni and Visage. Actually, so Rise yesterday, 100% pick ban, picked into, banned in three games, and it's all because of changes that came in the 5.8 and 5.10 patches. Uh, Rise's role and damage output has completely changed, so we really wanted to kind of update you guys 
changes on where Rise is right now. The first question to ask though is how was he pre-changes so that we can keep in mind the differences. So pre-changes, Rise, you'd used to max Q, you'd max that overload, get a lot of damage, but as well build uh, the stacking items of the Seraph's Embrace and the Rod of Ages. After that, you tend to go tanky and then in team fights just absorb a lot of damage while taking people out with sustained damage in return. However, Rise has completely changed now as we saw in yesterday's games. And with the reworked Rise, it's all due to his different passive. His changed passive now uh, with the Arcane Mastery. You want to go to the supercharged state, which is after you get five stacks of Arcane Mastery. And that means that every time you cast a spell, uh, the cooldown of your other spells will be reduced by a approximately four seconds. It's all linked in with the cooldown of Overcharge itself. The change in 5.10 is that that now lasts six seconds at all ranks. So you're not, you're not maxing Overcharge anymore, you're maxing Rune Prison, the W skill, and that adds extra root duration to Ryze's kit. Uh, build order has changed as well. Take a look here, still got the Stacking Seraph, still got the Rod of Ages, but the last few items, you wanna go for Magic Penetration and more AP. We even saw Huni go for a, uh, Went for a uh, man. Wow, that's uh, Luden's Echo. Thank you very much from the analyst desk over there. Man, new item for uh, season five and completely blanked on it there. That's how different it was from Huni, actually. But for Huni, we want to take a look at just how he dominated Steve in the game yesterday against Rockat. So we're going to take a look at some of the in game footage now. And uh, when we get that up onto the telestrator, you can see, I want, to keep, I want you to keep a track of the rune prisons here coming out from Huni and just how many he's getting onto Steve. And it's all because of the fast rotations on his abilities. He's throwing out a Q, throwing out an E in between every rune prison, always getting it when it's on cooldown. Now, level nine's a bit of a power spike for Ryze. When he reaches level nine, he gets the root duration all the way up to 1.75 seconds. And that can happen about every two seconds for Ryze. And you can see Steve just absolutely had no escape at all whatsoever. Uh, when you get to the later game with Ryze, his role in team fights becomes a lot more similar to a Cassiopeia, a little bit different, a lot of sustained damage. Uh, the trade-off for that is you get a lot of single target crowd control, but you're a lot, lot squishier on Ryze. Now, if you want to play Ryze yourself, check out uh, Runes and Masteries on lolesports.com's extended match histories for the full setups for Huni and Visit Chachi. But I'm sure we'll be seeing Ryze today. If not in picks, then soon certainly in the bands. Back to you guys at the analyst desk. Thank you so much, Stress. Well, um, uh, Arise did very good against me with the Ludens Echo as well, and I just wanted to block it out. I guess that's what happened to Stress as well. Thank you for that breakdown. We're looking forward to today's matches and see if Rise will appear. We'll be starting things off as Gambit looks to secure their very first win versus Fnatic. We have the Unicorns of Love versus Rocket, H2K versus Elements, another five games to see how the standings evolve. And our last game of the day will be OG taking on the Copenhagen Wolves. Before we get into today's first game, though, we want to reach out to you. Tweet at LL Esports and tell us who is the most underrated team in Europe so far this summer and why? I Gentlemen. want to answer this one uh, because I think Gambit are a little bit underrated. I think as a team, they're not performing to the level that they should be. And I do actually expect them to start picking up more wins as the season rolls on. I think both Gambit and SK have shown glimmers of hope, have shown signs of brilliance where they had decent games and almost got the victory, but they just fell short at the end. There was always that one step missing. And I'm looking forward to see if these teams can take that final step and finally get a victory on the board. And we will see. Well, we want to know what you guys think as well. So as always, send in your responses at LOL Esports and include that hashtag LCS. And now we're going to dial in on our very first match of the day between Gambit Gaming and Fnatic Asset. Gambit still looking for their very first win of the summer. And with our lineup, of course, Cabo Shard, Diamond Prox, Betsy, Forgiven, Gosu Pepper, and their coach, Shawns. Uh, they are up against Fnatic. Fnatic is <laughs> 3-0 so far, so not an easy feat for Gambit to get into this one. Let's take a look at the lineup for Fnatic on the red side. Huni, Rainover, Febivin, Reckless, Yellowstar, and their coach, Daylor. Yeah, Fnatic right now, they're 3-0, and Gambit's 0-3, and that's the biggest discrepancy you could possibly have at this point in the LCS. That means Gambit is, is like an animal trapped in the corner. They need that win, and Fnatic, they will have to be careful, because when you have an animal in the corner, they get unpredictable. And Yeah, exactly. Like you just did off camera. <laughs> <laughs> camera, why didn't you gonna get away doing with that? It. She was going to get away with it if it wasn't for the meddling crap. But what, my point is what I'm going to make is Gambit, when they get unpredictable, they're an incredibly tough team to play against, because they can always get back on top. Every time in history, people have written off Gambit, whether it was LCS or IEM, somehow they managed to come back. So I'm not ready to say that this is going to be 
an easy victory for Fnatic just yet. Yeah, nobody puts Gambit in the corner. But before we share some more thoughts on this matchup, we're going to hear what Reckless thinks his lane opponent can improve to be the best in the league. I think Forgiven's strongest like side towards uh, in comparison to other ADs is just his confidence in a way that when he plays, like he never hesitates. He also has like incredible mechanics and I think his only weakness is really his champion pool and maybe the fact that his gameplay is like so centered around him winning his lane. Uh, I think if he kind of dropped that idea a bit and then used his strength in maybe his rotation game or something like this and a bit a couple of more champions, he could be like for sure the best player we have here. Well, uh, perhaps Forgiven has taken that advice from his opponent after that Lucian in the first game. He did try out Ash. He did go for Ezra on the Rift. So there is an adaptation coming in. There is a little bit of adaptation, but I don't know if it's enough because that adaptation is great to see from Forgiven as an individual player, but it needs to be applied to the rest of the team. When I got when I saw the Ash locked in, I got excited, expecting these pinpoint sniper accuracy, you know, Ash arrows from across the map. But every single one of them needed to be a Hail Mary, let me save Gambit because the whole team started falling behind. So I think for a player like Forgiven, I'm excited excited he's playing new champions. I'm a little less excited that the team is not playing around him and those champions because of how strong a player is. It's MVP of the Spring Split. I just want to see Forgiven on champions with gap closers. His major strength is his mechanics and the fact that he almost reactively dodges skill shots all the time instead of doing it predictively. He is so quick on his feet and I want to see him use those gap closers both offensively and def defensively. And I was a little disappointed on his performance on Ash. It was too stagnant, too immobile of a pick and he got punished for it very hard. Yeah, moving away from his pick specifically, just the draft for Gambit yesterday, that was maybe the most dramatic we've seen so far. But on the opposite side of the spectrum, Fnatic has adapted so well yesterday, the Rise immediately in the mix, immediately showing what they can do. So that is an extra difficulty for uh, Gamut as well. Definitely going to be the case. We saw how powerful that pick can be. And then also just the question marks. You know, Gragas was locked in fairly early for Gambit. They put it top lane in Cabochard's hands. And I like Cabochard as a player. He's mechanically fantastic. And coming up against Huni today, it's going to be a fun matchup to watch. But I'd like to see him on a more meta pick. Give Diamond Gragas, although we know he's trending towards Volibear for the time being. So I think there's some big question marks on how Gambit will respond to the threats of Fnatic are going to put on the field. Yeah, indeed, uh, it will be a, a tall order for Cabo Shard as well. Huni yesterday, 80% kill, part kill participation. Rather, we saw him going up against Steve and just doing incredibly well. And it's kind of like Huni is already this good and now he has another pick that he can work with. I just was very impressed with how resilient Huni was. He was down 0-2, opted for the blasting one before he chose to go for more defensive items. He realized in that situation, either I get a kill right now and come back in the game or I'm out anyways. He got that kill and... All you need to give Huni is one kill and he starts rolling in. Fantastic performance so far in this split. And yeah, who's going to stop Huni? We will see. Will it be Gambit in this one? We're going to get some insider insight into Gambit's gaming start to the season and check in with Pyrotechnics, who's standing by with the newest member of their organization. Thank you very much, Shox. I am joined by Gambit's new coach. It is Sean's. First of all, thank you very much for joining me. I wanted to get right into it, though, because you know, you're a new face on the stage right now, but you have been around professional gaming and uh, in a lot of ways, actually. You've been a jungler for uh, Sparta Thunderbot. You've been a jungler for Millennium. You've been a caster, French caster. Uh, what made you change over to coaching? Why this decision? Um, basically, uh, I saw the offer from Gambit and uh well, I knew uh, we were talking with Kabochard and basically was saying, yeah, we still have tryouts, so maybe you can try. And then when I tried, I managed to have a good input into the team and communicate well with them. And then the time went and they just decided to pick up me and we are doing so far some great work, I guess. Now, I didn't work enough, but we will try to work more. Okay, so you've, uh, you've just kind of hit the ground running, obviously. And of course, uh, it sounds like you've already kind of answered this a little bit, but I want to get a little, dig a little deeper into this about uh, why Gambit really picked you in particular. What, what particular do you think that you had that stood out to them, and, and why did they choose you as a coach right now? Well, mostly, uh, I don't really know why they chose me, but uh, I think that uh, I know every player from solo queue first and in a team. Uh, for example, Cabo, I play with his brother, uh, Istari, back in the days with Sparta. And then they all know me, and basically I'm someone really positive that thinks a lot about the game and always try to anticipate things and think a lot about strategy. I was never like the jungler mechanically gifted or just making plays or all, just like calling everything and trying to make things like prepared enough and that's why basically I was a coach like I want uh, Gambit to see in a bigger picture how the game should go what they should pick in order to do that and like try to have two or three minutes in advance for the game before entering the stage you know 
Gotcha. It, it takes a cool head. You have to be able to think in that way. So uh, on that same token, uh, looking at this Gambit team right now, you guys have obviously gotten off to a bit of a bumpy start. What is your number one priority with the team to, to push those wins forward? Well, I want the team, first of all, to improve. Like, they are all really talented. Five individualities, really good. But I want them to be one team only. And that's what we're working on. Like, I noticed first that they were maybe a little bit sometimes lost in the mid-game to late-game compared to some of the good teams like Freddy Gosh 2K we faced, and we're going to face. And I wanted to work a lot about, um, on it. So we basically only work our strategy about how you should think about the game more like, let's say, strategy over the kills, you know. And uh, we worked a lot, players worked a lot, and are really motivating and improving as far as I see on the day of the scrims and things like this. And we really want to show a big, maybe not today, we want to beat Fnatic, but it's still a harsh step, but we will improve uh, week after week. Week after week, we will have to see. And of course, uh, one last question for you. I just want to know, Shans, so far you've only been with this team a little bit. Obviously, you're still in an interim position, but what is your favorite thing working with these Gambit guys? Oh, tough, tough question, actually. I enjoy really a lot the time since I came in the gaming house. But uh, yeah, basically, they are a really funny guy. I can talk, everyone talks pretty much about everything, and we are really enjoying the moment so far. And the thing that I like the most is that they all have the desire to improve, whatever he's saying on the social network, everything. Like, I'm in the gaming house, I'm working for them, and I know that they so want to improve. Like, that's really satisfying as a coach to just come in and just say, okay, guys, we're going to work on it, uh, watching this replay, and they are like, okay, go, and they just sit down and they just work, and they, they answer to my questions, they give facts and inputs, and it's so great to work. Fantastic. I'm, I'm glad you have so much good stuff to work with. Thank you very much once again for joining me. Go ahead back to your team, and best of luck today. For now, though, we're going to go ahead and send it over to the caster desk to take this one into game. Thank you very much, Pyrotechnics. You may remember us from just moments ago. I'm Quickshot. This is Krepo. We've taken a magical journey over to the caster desk, and the teams are making the final adjustments before picks and bans. We've talked a lot about Rise. You yesterday talked a lot about the likes of Alistair, Azia, Casio. What are we expecting for Gambit and Fnatic in picks and bans? Well, Alistair went unpicked two of the games yesterday, if I recall correctly. So it looks like either I was wrong or the teams were wrong, but something it's was wrong. It's a new patch as well. New patch, indeed. But yeah, I really like Alistair as a support currently. Rise is pretty strong. So it feels almost like these ban, ban pick phases are becoming predictable to a sense. that so, You have to ban so many champions, and then even after the bans, there's so many champions left. Well, we'll find out which teams decide